Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is tip two in the series of Espresso Nuts and Bolts tutorials. And in this one we're going to be looking at the spline input here on the range mapper node. Something I've never actually used anywhere before, so I thought it was about time I checked it out and found out what it did. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. Let's just move this out of the way. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that you could get a hold of your spline pen tool, draw a spline, and forgive my spline drawing here, it's pretty poor, but it doesn't really matter. This is only for illustrative purposes. And then get a hold of it, drag it into the editor window here, the Espresso editor, and give it an object port and plumb it into the spline. But no, it's greyed out, so you can't do that. So that's not the way this works. If we just come down here, we can see that we've got a spline here, and it's a data mapping spline. So what this actual input allows you to do is pass a spline into the range mapper from outside of the node. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the most obvious way is to get a hold of a condition and I'm not going to need to change anything at the input stage because everything is set up perfectly well for us. But the data type, we actually do have a spline option. And when we do this, straight away we've got a couple of splines available to us which are exactly the same type of spline as we've got in the range mapper node. So this is the way we can do it. So the first one, if we just make this a linear spline, so we'll select this point, come into the interpolation and say linear. That creates a linear spline. And then in this one, we'll make this an ease in, a, ease in or a rather ease out, ease in curve is what I should say. So with our tangents here, we'll make them, well, this one minus 0.35. And I'll make this one 35 so that it's quite a pronounced sort of easy net, easy out, easy in curve. We can also get rid of this spline now, we don't need that. So all we need to do then is connect the output of the condition to the input of the range mapper. And now we've got access to both of these, so we can send either the linear or the ease out, ease in curve to the range mapper. Fantastic, so we've got that bit of it worked out. So in order to demonstrate how this works, what I'll do, I'll just bring a cube into the scene, make it a bit smaller. 20 by 20 by 20 should be fine. Put a fillet on it, why not? Make that a centimeter. Okay, we'll just change the viewport a little bit here so that we can see it the way we want to see it. Let's just zoom in a little bit on there. Okay, great. So that's good. So we can drag the cube in and we will be working with position X. So we'll just plumb that in there. Nothing's going to happen yet, of course, because we've got to plumb something into the input of the range mapper. So what I'm going to do for that is get a hold of a time node. As always, get rid of the time port and replace it with a frame port. I'm going to plumb that into the input range, and then we'll start thinking about working with the range mapper and seeing what we want to do. <clears throat> well, at the moment it's set to 90 or 0 to 90 in, in the input range, and that actually is fine because we've got 90 frames on our timeline there as our preview range, and that's fine. And then 0 to 300, well, yeah, that, that actually that will be fine. I think we can leave that at 0 to 300 because if we just play the timeline now, let's see what we get. Will 300 be enough? Well, it almost is. I'll tell you what, let's make it 350. So we'll go 0 to 350, see what we get now. Yeah, that's fine. 0 to 350 will work fine for us. Okay, so at the moment we're using the linear spline, so we're not seeing the ease out, ease in curve at the moment. So in order to do that, what I'll do is get a hold of my Espresso here, and I'm going to add some user data. 
and I'll just call this switch and it will be well it needs to be an integer really but we'll leave it as a float um, because I, have we got an integer option that we have have we so we'll yeah, leave it as a float it's okay just say a real value and steps of one and, and it just needs to go from 0 to 1 and just min max We'll check those so that it can't go any higher. We'll leave the default at zero. So that's fine and that's ready to go. So what we can then do is drag the Espresso into the editor and come down to user data switch and then plug that into the switch and we're ready to go. So if we, we've got the Espresso selected um, and it's all looking good. So we've got the switch there and we can just click on that and it's going to change it for us. Could have put a float slider in there, but it doesn't really matter for what it is. OK, so let's just see what's going on here. And to actually illustrate this further, what I'll do, I'll create another condition node here. Plumb the switch into there. And this time I want a different data type. I'm going to use a data type of text if I can do it or string rather that's what I want so that I can work with text and I'm going to type linear in the first one and ease out ease in in the second one so that's set that up and all I need now is a text spline I'll drop that under the cube Pull it into here and plumb in my output into the object properties text spline. Now at the moment the text is way too big so we need to just work with that make it something like 30 and I'm going to select alignment middle. So I've got my text there if I just pick this up and move it somewhere here that should work fine for us. So let's run the timeline. So at the moment we're in linear mode. If we select the Espresso and we click on there, we're in ease in ease out mode. And you can see that it speeds up and slow. Well, it starts slowly, speeds up and then slows down as it comes to a stop. So it's working perfectly well. And now we're back in linear mode. So yeah, all is good. Now, obviously, you'd, if you were using this in a perhaps more technical situation, the chances are you wouldn't just use a user data slider on it. You'd do something a bit cleverer. You might use a flip flop, perhaps, to switch this at certain times. Now, my plan, in fact, I've already made the scene file, is to produce, uh, it's going to be a multi-text tutorial that shows a much more advanced use or a more interesting use for this and it uses a number of different things there's a bit of python in there not much and there's also uh, as i say a flip-flop and various other bits and pieces within that scene file that show quite an interesting use for how this can be made to work so please look out for that one but anyway that's what i wanted to show you in this quick tip tutorial here uh, in this little nuts and bolts tutorial so i hope you've learned something from this and that it's been of use to you and that it's been quite enjoyable to actually see it work. And if it has, then please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share the video, because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel going in the right direction. But anyway, that just about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.